Hinakwe. Welcome to the video tutorial, which is going to help you to understand the latest Whanui from the Ministry, dated the 11th of August 2022, what it means and the how-to in info here. So what the Ministry has released as at the 11th of August 2022 is that there's been an update to the funding settings in this current funding period, which goes from 1 June until the 30th of September 2022. The first thing that they've announced is that the funding band protections for teacher-led centre-based services. So if, for example, your funding has been advanced at the 80 to 99% funding band, and for this current funding period, you've dropped to the 50 to 79% funding band, what the Ministry is stating here is that they will fund you for the funding period at the 80 to 99%. So they're protecting your funding band under the current setting because of the staffing shortages. What they've also announced in this Panui is that the, uh, there is a change to the absence rules and the need for the EC12, EC13. What they announced when we look at the 12th of May Panui is that if a child was absent due to these circumstances, then what the parent could do would be to complete an EC13 and you and the parent complete an EC12 form to apply a special needs exemption for that period. What they've stated in this latest Panui is that there is no longer the need for the EC13 and EC12 forms to be completed. So you no longer need to get the documentation to exempt a child from the absence rules for this current funding period. So just a reminder, if the children's absences during this current funding period are related to these reasons, you no longer need to get the EC12, EC13 forms completed. The other thing that they've announced in this latest Panui is that you no longer need to keep documentation about why a registered employee was absent and your attempts to get a registered reliever needing to get an unregistered reliever because registered weren't available. So you no longer need to keep evidence of your attempts to get a registered reliever. What we're going to look at now is A, how to apply special needs exemption for a child, and B, how to use discretionary hours. Great. So when we come through to InfoCare, what we're going to do is first apply the exemption, the EC12 exemption um, for a child. So. If we come to reports, and if we come to child reports, and come down to frequent absences, what we're going to do is just review our frequent absence report for July. Now, when we click print, these are the children that have broken the frequent absence rule. The frequent absence report doesn't necessarily report on those that have broken the three-week rule, depending on the three-week rule absence, but... When reviewing your children that are breaking the frequent absence rule, what you need to do is consider whether or not these children have broken the absence rule because of one of these four reasons. If they have, then you can apply the EC12, EC13 exemption without paperwork from the parent. Another way to check the three-week rule for children is to come to reports child reports and have a look at the attendance report. So now if we have a look at this for the month, for the month of July, when we click print, any child that has come up in yellow and is absent has broken the three week rule. So having a look at your attendance report, do any of these children meet the criteria of this and can they be exempt from the absence rules? If so, you don't need to get the EC12, EC13 forms completed. You can apply the exemption. Now, when we think about how we apply the exemption, because the exemption is children-based, it's not centre-based, you just come to children. Select the child who qualifies for the exemption. Come to their 
timetable. Now what you need to do is that you need to add a new timetable and date it from when the exemption applies. Now the only thing that you need to do here is select special needs. So this is turning on the exemption. Now because I'm not changing the child's enrolment or anything else, I'm just applying the special needs, I don't need to get a confirmation of enrolment. Now, when you're applying the absence rule, because it's for a prior date, InfoCare is alerting you to the fact that sign-in sheets may need to be updated. And in this instance, we do need to update them to apply that exemption. Now, the other important thing too is that we've turned on the, the exemption. We need to also add another timetable from when the exemption ends, removing it. So update the dates that the exemption no longer applies for and remove the special needs exemption. Now, when we update, you can see that we've also got some sign-in sheets which may be incorrect after the change. What we're going to do now is update the sign-in sheets. So when we come to our favourites, our start items, and when we come to our sign-in sheets, what we need to do is navigate to the first date of the exemption. So you can simply type in a date or use the calendar icon. Now when we click search, we can see that we've got the sign-in sheet. And all we need to do to apply the exemption is open the sign-in sheet. When you open the sign-in sheet, InfoCare performs a couple of functions. One is to check the centre calendar to see if there's any exemption, like an emergency closure. It also checks the child's timetable to see if there is any special needs required or any update to the 20 hours ECE. Now, as we know, we've applied a special needs selection for the child. So when we go through, we just need to click next day. What don't folk here? is doing is doing those checks and applying the exemption for the child that we've applied it to. So you just need to navigate through all of the sign-in sheets affected by the changes in the timetables. Just working through to when that exemption ends. Now what I'm doing here is just clicking anywhere on the sign-in sheet, then I'm hitting end on my keyboard. That's just an easy way to get to the bottom without needing to use the scroll bar on your mouse or down the side of the screen. Now we apply the exemption until the 5th of August. So just continuing through until that date. Now that I'm at the end of the sign-in sheet that need updating, I'm just going to click Update. Perfect. Now when we come back to our reports, child reports and attendance, when we look at the monthly one for the month of July, for example, when we click Print, what we'll notice is that the child is no longer highlighted in yellow. The child has continued to have funding claimed. Another way to see it for an individual child is when you come to children, you select your child or just start typing their name. When you come to their history, what we can see is that funding has continued to be claimed and special needs has been applied for that child. The second part that we were going to look at is how to use discretionary hours. So in the instance where you've had a registered teacher absent and you've had an unregistered reliever because you couldn't get registered, how to use those discretionary hours. So that's all managed in your staff timesheet. So when we come to our staff timesheet and we think about, for example, it could have been possibly the 11th. No, we're going to go next day and we're going to go to the 12th. So here's an example where we had a registered teacher absent, and we had an unregistered reliever coming in to work for that absent registered teacher. When we click 
view for our ratios, what we can see is the parts of the day where we've dipped in our funding band. So these are the times that you would consider using discretionary hours. So for example, between nine, for, uh, between nine and 10, and also between two and three. Discretionary hours are rounded. So what that means is that if I had have used discretionary hours for half an hour, it would take one hour. If I use discretionary hours for 15 minutes, it would be rounded down. So I'm just going to use discretionary hours for two hours this day just to support my funding band. We can see that for the whole funding period, we're still well within the 80 to 99% funding band. This is just an illustration about how to use discretionary hours. So now when we go back, and what we want to do is we want to select our unregistered reliever. So what we can do is in the worked column, where we want to use discretionary hours, we select substitute. We're substituting an unregistered person as being registered for the purposes of funding. Just wanting to use it for that one hour, now we change it back to contact so that it's only using substitute hours for that one particular hour. And you'll notice that you've got to use discretionary hours here. When we click update, what we can see is that for that period of time, we've used discretionary hours. Another way to see what discretionary hours have been used is that when you're in the actual timesheet update, what you can do is you can change this to be show discretionary hours. Then down the bottom here is the discretionary hours that have been used for this current funding period. Now, because it's been set to 80, InfoCare will not let you use more than 80 discretionary hours for this funding period. Thank you very much for your time, and we hope this information has been helpful for you in keeping up with the information that comes out from the Ministry of Education. Kia pai tōra. Hei